I want to describe a little bit the process that took place here. This had, uh, to put this bill together and to arrive at this destination, uh, we took maybe almost nine months, a little short of nine months, of going through a process of asking questions, asking questions in the community, asking questions of ourselves, looking to see what mechanisms there were that are available that can address uh, maybe some of the answers to some of the questions that uh, were being raised. And what we found out was that through that process, which was partially a learning process for ourselves, and bringing in technical assistance and so forth, we arrived at the product that we have here and the bill that we have before you. So the first thing that we did, at, and we all came together on it. It was, a, it was an amazing process, quite frankly. But what we did was we defined the area. That was the first thing we wanted to do. What, what is the logical break of this area? So we defined the natural relationship of what we were trying to do to the natural uh, development or uh, the borders of various neighborhoods. And we identified nine neighborhoods, of what we generally would call west of 9th Street uh, to the river in Louisville, and then north of Alg roughly Algonquin Parkway to the river. So there are nine neighborhoods in that particular area. In those neighborhoods, we began to look at the, what was the home ownership rates in those areas. And I think we came to about roughly 39%, 39 or 40 percent in that particular area because that was key to our consideration because we knew that part of whatever we were going to do had to be based upon how do we stabilize home ownership and then build out from there. So there was enough uh, mass in terms of home ownership uh, to work with with respect to that. So we had this central question of gentrification, you know, how we deal with that particular uh, uh, piece. We recognize that there are a lot of strategies that raise to anti-gentrification, uh, anti but within this particular bill, one of the key things that we addressed that we understood and knew was gonna be important was that many people get displaced because if you're successful in raising, uh, revitalizing, it raises uh, the valuations that translates into higher payments and taxes, people get displaced. A lot of those folks are older. A lot of them are in these homes uh, for life. And so what we did, we took all that in consideration and realized that if we uh, embarked upon a 30 year tax cap, in other words, the valuations would still go up, but the payments with respect to those properties would be capped over that 30 year period. That if we also extended that to the heirs of those individuals who were going to make that particular property their primary uh, residents, then that would lay the foundation, at least from the standpoint that we were coming from, of uh, uh, anti-gentrification -gent type of move. But we also recognized that in doing this particular piece, that we had to make sure that there were some other dynamics, coordination, for instance, with city government and various other kinds of, of uh, dynamics and, and uh, interests that were operating the area, including nonprofits and so forth. So we, we built that particular piece in terms of our investigation as to how this could fit together in the real world. Uh, part of this, of course, was aimed at economic development. So we knew that there had to be funding in that particular regard. So how do you fund without raising somebody's taxes in this situation? That's why the TIF became something that was realistic in terms of this piece. Except the twist in this situation is that this has one that's driven really by the community. Not a community devoid of the expertise because you talked about how finance has to be in that mix when you deal with that kind of thing and the complexities of what we're dealing with. But the fact of the matter is we that became the governance piece that was driven by participation of not only those individuals that had the expertise to do this, but also to guarantee at least on the 17 uh, member board, at least five of those that come out of those nine neighborhoods and rotate those. Ideally, what we would like to see is nine of them, one coming out of each of those neighborhoods on that board. They would do the plan. We wouldn't do the planning. They would do the planning. And of course, they'd have access to other expertise throughout Louisville in terms of getting that done as well. But notwithstanding that particular piece, the question still is, well, where does the money come from in this regard? Well, in this plan, what we're proposing is that private and public in, uh, interests would, uh, would put $20 million into this from the front, and that would trigger $10 million, hopefully, from the state. And that would be a $30 million initial investment in this piece. That would get it off, uh, off the, the dime, so to speak. But what we know will happen, because we've seen it in other communities that we've looked at, that once you have an intentional plan like this, 
that's projected to do certain kinds of things and it's uh, something that others that have as their mission this type of activity in terms of recovering and revitalizing communities that you draw their interest in there. So we expect that kind of involvement and, and um, input uh, and further investment in that regard. But also it opens up private enterprise. It opens up the private investment sector with respect to this. That's a very central part because what we're really trying to do on the economic development piece, as you all know, those that are familiar with uh, economies and so forth, you got to turn money over in your community several times if you're going to make that a healthy environment, uh, economic environment. So trying to uh, deal with those who have existing businesses in the community, generating the activity of other business initiatives in the community, and the building that, infra that economic infrastructure is key to that. It doesn't exclude larger enterprise, but we also recognize, let's say as an example, if someone came in and wanted to invest and they wanted to do a multi-unit um, uh, apartment complex or something. Well, part of what we would do, of course, would build in affordable homeowner uh, dynamics to make sure that we don't price out people that would want to stay in their, in their community with respect to that. So these are the kinds of things and mechanisms that we built in for those who are driving the plan, the ultimate plans, the, the macro plans, the micro plans that are necessary to make this happen and the necessary interaction and coordination and articulation between these plans, that will give them a lot to work with, but it give them a framework and leverage to do those things uh, that would keep this in the framework of, of the intentions of our objectives here. So there's a lot of other factors uh, that, that we could answer to. I'm not sure I can get into all of them because I got to tell you, this was a long, long discussion. I can't think of anything I've been involved in in my plus 30 plus years in this legislature that I've put this much time in. And I, I went to school with respect to that. I have to, I have to concede, but I've learned a lot. And I've learned that if you put faith and trust in people, good people, who want to do good by themselves and by their neighbors. And if you want to empower them to have the ability to move from zero, 10 or 15 to 100, then this is one initiative that I think they can do this. I just want to make another point and then I'm going to turn it over to whoever the next President Stivers. Um, let, me, let me say this. This is not necessarily a model that we're saying, or I'm saying here, let me speak for myself here, that look, let's take this and let's see how this works and let's just fan this out all over Kentucky or let's find this, fan this out all over uh, Louisville. But guess what? It will be, it will inform us. The experience that comes out of this will inform us as to what kinds of options and what kind of variations and what kinds of strategies that we can use in other areas in Kentucky. So it's not just about uh, so goes Louisville, so goes Kentucky. Of course, there's obviously a lot of good argument related to that. But also, I think it has uh, lessons to be learned that I think will inform uh, our other communities across Kentucky uh, that may uh, be in a framework by which we can use some of the lessons that we learned from this particular initiative. So I'm going to stop right there and be happy to answer any questions. Turn it over to President.